So uh, timing is perfect for you guys because now that uh, now that you're here and you're joining today, you got to learn how to invite somebody to see this tomorrow. And there is nobody better than this next gentleman. Uh, for time's sake, I'm not going to go through the long edification that I'd like to. But I, when I see this guy speak, I feel like a, a proud daddy. Uh, seriously, you know, some people can get up and talk, but do they really do the business and understand it? This guy, from the very first, has been chopping wood and locking arms with people and having success by helping others. When a new associate gets into business, he locks arms and says, who are the first five people we can talk to? Let's have a home meeting this weekend. And he built the business organically the way it's supposed to be built because he knows how to master the invitation. Give it up for Presidential Director, Mr. Mike Fogan. So my name is Mike Fogan. I have ADHD. <laughs> I'm OCD. I forget things. I'm disorganized. And if you listen to Greg Savage, I'm an utter mess. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, you can be an utter mess, disorganized, forgetful, and still be a top 25 money earner in this business if you can invite. <laughs> so when I started the business, November 9, 2010, didn't know anything about it, obviously. I didn't pay attention that well because of my ADHD. So many things going on. But I knew it was big, and I decided to get in. I asked Presley Swaggerty, well, what do I do now? He said, well, you just bring people to the meeting. The meeting, you invite people. I said, well, what do I say? And he wrote something down, and I basically went something like this. John, it's Mike, how are you? Hey, listen, I recently partnered with some very sharp entrepreneurs in something big, and they asked me to introduce them to a couple of guys that like to make money. What are you doing Wednesday night, or would Thursday be better? That's all I did, but I did it a lot. <laughs> Every business card laying around in my house or office, any contact in my cell phone, a date book, anybody's date book that I knew, that knew me, <laughs> I'm making those calls, 10, 15, 20 a day, and I'm inviting constantly to the meeting. So on average, over the last five and a half years, my wife and I have sponsored about a uh, little more than one person a month, so we sp sponsored 80 people, and that has grown into over 6,400 associates. Wow. I only say that to let you know that it works if you can properly invite. Here's the story behind the, the importance of just knowing inviting. There was a scene in my kitchen that took place in the first three weeks when, well, you have to understand, my wife was a little skeptical because I had tried some other things in the past <laughs> that maybe didn't work, I mean, network marketing or whatever, right? justifiably so for her concern. So she said, um, how, how are we doing in this new business? I said, amazing. I said, we, we have about 30 people already in the first month. I said, well, when are we getting paid? I said, well, they need to do something first. <laughs> they signed up, but they need to do something. I said, what do you mean? Well, they got to do something with their electric bill. She's like, what do you mean? I said, they got to switch it somehow. Oh my. I didn't have a grasp on the details of the business. I knew it was big. Well, I, I highlight that to illustrate that you just got to invite and it all falls into, into place. Okay? It all started clicking and boy did it start running fast. And I want to talk about that today. You start with a written list of names. Don't just hear it and think it's some cliche. Write the names down, and you're going to work through those names. You're going to highlight the doers, the ones that stand out. We call it the chicken list. Those that you're too chicken to really call, but you want to call them because sharp people get this. And you're going to look at that third-party credibility. Guess what Brian Lucia did the first week I was in the business? He drove, after he flew here from Texas, he drove an hour and a half from where I live to meet Barb and Ed Ennis and Ed Ennis Jr. in a diner in the area. I didn't know anything. I'm just sitting there and letting him do all the talking, okay? That resulted in them joining the business. Then I, the same day, I actually invited Greg and Noreen Savage into the business. They both joined in that day, all right? It's amazing how three and a half years after they joined in the same month of January, 
both couples promoted to executive director. Amazing. They brought in probably 3,500 associates. Okay. I happened to get my two of my four aces in the beginning of the deck of cards, right? You heard the story, there's 52 cards in a deck, there's four aces in there somewhere. You'll find them, they're always in there, whether they're at the beginning, the middle, or the end. I got them in the beginning, at least some of them, okay? The most amazing thing about it was that Greg Savage actually amounted to something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all he had to do is hit the record button on the phone, right? Anyway, so, you're, not, you're never ever going to use email, okay? That is the number one dumbest thing you can do. And of course, I did it in the beginning. So you can learn from my mistake because people need to hear the inflection in your voice, yep. the seriousness on your, see the seriousness on your face when you convey to them that this is a life-changing opportunity. It doesn't work. It's not conveyed via email, right? 89% of communication is nonverbal, right? So you don't want to use email or you'll burn your whole list. Talk to your sponsor, ask them what not to do and ask them what works, all right? So you're gonna keep planting seeds and don't worry if somebody says no, it's not no, just no now, it's not no forever. But this, listening, is the advanced training because once I got going, I didn't have this. And as Brian alluded to before, I just threw up all over everybody. I was so excited, right? Yes, the excitement was good. People said, you don't sound like you know what you're talking about, but I'm still going to go to the meeting because you're so excited, right? So it's good in that respect. But as I learned, as I watched these top 25 leaders, I learned how to listen. But I decided to find something to listen to. So I learned how to ask questions so you had something to listen to. I sat down with a good friend of mine who's here today, Greg Reed. By the way, did his three and ten in 30 days. Give him a hand. <laughs> so we sat down at Perkins and I said, tell me about what you do, how long you've been doing it. Does your mother know you do that? No. <laughs> to borrow something from Randy Hedge. I, found, I said, tell me about it. What, what are the biggest challenges? So, well, I'm getting up there. He's a window cleaner with 1,200 clients, massive business. But he said, I'm getting a little too old for this. It's very physical. I said, tell me more about it. I want him to elaborate on his concern, right? I'm listening because I asked questions. And I, I asked him, well, you know, three years is gonna go by either way, whether you do this business or not. But let me ask you, what would you need in life to survive, okay, if you, you really got conservative here? What would you need to make every month to be able to just let your business be run by somebody else or not even have it, he gave me the number. I said, you know what? We can do that in three years. Might be sooner, but we can do that in three years. Three years is going by no matter what. Wouldn't it be nice to have an extra two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000? So he joined the business and I, we keep focusing on that need, okay? That he needs to have an exit strategy for his business. But I only discovered that because I asked questions and therefore had something to listen to, all right? So being a great listener involves asking questions. Never prejudge. Again, I did not, I invite everybody in. I, I invited Greg Savage in. <laughs> he still did well, see? And I, have a, I always had a sense of urgency, and you always can legitimately because you have these promotions, right? right. Amazing promotions and you want to convey those promotions. You also want to convey, as we did in the beginning, one of the most factually and motivating things is that I'd say, Jim, listen, you don't want to overthink this because words out, people are getting into this business and there's nothing worse than one year. I was at the Langhorne Sheridan and right in the front row was Gabe. Someone who my wife and I were meant to talk to, she, he's the husband of someone she teaches with. And we just put it off and putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And there he is. And he looks up at me just when I'm ready to give this motivational thought. Mike, I'm in it. I love this thing. How come you never called me? Oh. I said, hey, great to see you. Oh. <laughs> so what's my point? Sense of urgency. If you don't talk to your friends and family, someone will. And it's not a good feeling. Get to them first. If you're here today and you're new, start running. Hit that list. Posture. It is that undescribable thing that works. It's hard to describe posture. It's excitement. It's the tone of your voice. It's your belief level. And that's what I had in the beginning 
even though I didn't understand it all. I needed something in my life. I wanted to dive into something, to sink my teeth into something. I was so excited to have it. It came, all, came through the phone when I was on the phone. It certainly came through when I was looking at someone and physically in front of them. All right? And you're going to be knowledgeable about the industry. You're going to be able to tailor your proposal to them, as I mentioned with Greg, how you can solve their needs. And as you talk to people, you're going to make invitation after invitation after invitation. Each one of these drips is a person or a conversation. All right? I, again, you believe in everyone and you wait for no one. That was my philosophy. Yeah. All right? Yes, I believed in Greg and Lorraine Savage, Barb and Ed Ennis, and Ed Jr. And they're superstars. But I didn't wait for them. I just kept inviting I wanted as many people as I could. I had everybody at different stages of the pipeline, okay? Some people just heard it or saw a brief exposure. Some came to meetings. Some came to big events. And they were all at different stages. And then one day, when we were working, literally, we knew where every meeting was in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And we were inviting people to the Freehold meeting, to the Lumberton meeting, which is on Monday nights, by the way to the, the Doylestown meeting, to the Harrisburg meeting. And we had seven meetings we were connecting people to because they always want to go to a meeting close to where they live. And then one day, Stream comes out with this amazing promotion. They're all amazing, right? That amazing promotion, and everybody kind of put it off, put it off, put it off to the last day of January. January 31st, do or die, right? And they did. They all jumped in because we had people at many different levels of the process. Okay, of, of the exposure process. And I remember that day when, because when someone joins in your business, your phone can be set to ring a certain way or, or make a cheer. We set ours to a cheer. Like when Jay Leno, the crowd, you know, he comes out, the crowd cheers. So our, my phone started going off, a cheer, a group cheer. It was exhilarating. That's what it was. I just got chilled. It's so ingrained in me. Okay? I'd be like watching Jay Leto at night and forget I'm watching him and the cheer, I'm like, somebody sign up. <laughs> so the phone went off again and again and again and again. And not to air my dirty laundry, but my wife and I were having a somewhat tense night. And she says, will you shut that phone off? I said, one. <laughs> Every time that phone goes off, it's $175. It can play a symphony for all I can. <laughs> it went off 94 times that night. <laughs> Presley's went off 1,800 times. Oh. Rich Desmond was on a cruise and made 7,500 that day <laughs> on a cruise. So this come, it happens when you get people in the various stages of the process. Now. A smart person learns from his own mistakes, but a wise person learns from others', others. others mistakes. Okay? This here is filtered through. All the mistakes are taken out. You simply need to do this. It's not hard. John, I'd love to share something with you. It's probably going to take about 30 minutes. And honestly, you may or may not be interested, but you need to see this. Now, we can meet for coffee Monday morning, or I can just buy a lunch Monday, Tuesday afternoon, which is best. You see, words are softer. There's psychology behind the words. It's, I want to share something with you. It's only going to be about 30 minutes. It, take the pressure off. It may or may not be for you, which is cool, man. But you need to see this. Now, I can either meet tonight or we can meet Friday. You want to take a picture of that, as I see some of you doing. You want to use this. It's simple. You just practice it. Practice makes perfect. I tell people when they join my business, the people I love that I know will succeed are the people that come to me and say, Mike, I've called 15 people and no one joined. I said, you're a winner. Because that means they're going through the process. They have the skin to hear no. I don't like the people that say, uh, everybody I called said no. I said, how many people do you call? Like two. <laughs> right? So you'll get this. Just practice it. It's okay to get beat up. It's all normal. It shows what you have. Now, what do you do? You know, the biggest question people fear is, so what do I say? How do I say it? See, in life, success is where preparation meets opportunity. Just prepare. The opportunity is coming. It's coming a lot. Everybody you know is going to be talking to you soon. So you want to have something that's very short, very powerful. I mean, Randall Blackman has one of the best. He says, they say, well, what do you do? I sell hopes and dreams. What do you do? You see, he gets off the subject. Whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute. What do you mean you sell hopes and dreams? 
Okay, there's a lot of things you can say. I have my favorites. I'll share them with you now. Um, what, what do you fill in the rest of this sentence? One of the biggest objections. Mike, it sounds good, but I don't have a lot of time. How'd you like to eliminate that forever and never hear it again? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So I'm talking to people. I ask them about their lives, question after question after question. So much so they finally say, well, what do you do? I say, well, I have a business specifically designed for busy people with no time that helps them earn an extra thousand a month to get the kids through college without any debt or to put their retirement on steroids. One guy literally said the other day, that's me, I have no time. I said, it's for you then. What do you do? John, I, I, I have a business specifically designed for busy people with no time that helps them earn an extra thousand dollars a month to get their kids through college without any debt at all or loans or to put their retirement on steroids. It's a great line. It works. How about this one? Now, I'm going to teach it to you with one sentence because this one sentence will be ingrained in your mind. You ready? I want you to repeat after me. You're kidding. That's what I do. <laughs> so you meet the guy in the bank that you went to high school with, you hadn't seen him in a while, and you're asking them questions about themselves, right? How do you become a good listener? You ask questions, therefore you have something to listen to, right? So you're asking him and asking him and asking him, he finally says, um, he reveals his pain. He said, life's great, but you know, I don't know how I'm going to get these three kids through college. They're all going at the same time. You look at him, you say, with a look of shock, you're kidding. That's what I do. <laughs> I have a business specifically designed for p people that helps them make the extra money to get their kids through college without any debt. He said, really? Well, tell me about it. Well, I can't. I got to get out of here now, but I meet with my business partners every Tuesday night at the Days Inn in Westchester. Why don't you come out? You see, the invitation is just setting the appointment, is it not? Yes. You meet someone else. At, at the Perkins, you run into them on the way out. And you've always been close, but you've been out of touch, and you're saying, how's it going? Tell me about your life, how's it going? Finally, at the end of the conversation, he says, everything's good, the kids are out of college, but honestly, Mike, I'll share this with you. 90 days behind on the house, I think I'm gonna lose it in foreclosure. You're kidding. That's what I do. <laughs> huh? I have a business specifically designed for people who are, whose houses are in foreclosure to help them make the extra money to get out of foreclosure. <laughs> really, tell me about it. I would, but I can't. i got to get out of here right now. I meet with my business partners every Monday night in Lumberton at Dad's Bar and Grill. One more to show you how far you can take it. You meet another friend uh, from years ago. You've always had this rapport, and he shares with you, life is great. Kids are through school. My house is out of foreclosure. All the problems are gone. But he says, my heart's breaking. As you know, my guy was adopted, and my 95-year-old mom is ill, and I cannot care for her properly. I don't know what to do. I say, you're kidding me. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> he says, what? I have a business specifically designed to help people properly, properly care for, care for their aging loved ones. You're kidding me. I'm not kidding. Well, tell me about it. I can't right now, but I'd love to get together with you. We meet in Doylestown every Thursday night at 7 with my business partner. Why don't you come by? You see how far you can take it? You have to tailor your response. Now, Stream cannot solve everybody's needs in life, but an extra $1,000 ain't hurting, is it not? Right? And, you know, I'm low ball. You can do, your life can change with a lot more. Now, moving on. Um, you know, there are some other great things. I teach stay-at-home moms how to make more than their husband. There's a lot of little quips. And by the way, you know, we have some great specific videos of every occupation. Greg and his wife, Noreen, they were interviewed in that stay-at-home mom video. Just Google or YouTube, Noreen Savage. If you're talking to a stay-at-home mom, send that video. It's amazing. Um, but you want to be prepared for your elevator pitch when someone says, what do you do? Okay? If you can get a fake ring, I'd get one of these rings. This is a top 25 money earners ring. I cannot tell you how many questions I get on this ring. Okay? Used to be in a Super Bowl? I'm like, do I really? Do I look like I used to be in a Super Bowl? No. I said, this thing, and I act like this is the first time I've ever been asked. Oh, this? <laughs> um, you know that my company gave me this because I helped 25,000 people pay less on their Pico bill. You're not still paying a higher rate, are you, John? <laughs> you see, but you can make it anything, okay? You can have a badge with your name on it. You can have a stream shirt that sparks a conversation, and you have to be ready. 
have to be ready. Success is where preparation meets opportunity. Now, cold calling. Um, you want to be, as you grow in your business, as you become a senior director, executive director, you got to learn to fish in the cold pond, right? You often, you know, you say, I exhausted my war market. Well, it's okay because the pond is very big, the cold pond, right? And I love it when you compliment first and then ask the question. We go out to eat and I always love when the waitress does a good job and I compliment first then I ask the question at the end of the meal. Lisa, you know, you did a great job. It's very hectic here. You're very good with people. Would you mind if I asked you a question? No, I don't know. Do you ever entertain alternate ways of earning income if it would not interfere with your waitress job here? Every time, like, well, yeah. Would it be okay if, powerful words, would it be okay if I texted you a three minute video showing you how I make money? Guess what she does then as I look down at my phone? Guys, greatest pickup line ever. Get the number up. <laughs> Every, I don't have a number being refused, ever. Would it be okay if I texted you a short three minute video showing you how I make money? She just starts giving me the number. Now guys, cautionary, you never want to use the, the line unless it's exactly as I said, and you don't want to use it in a bar. You don't want to say, hey, you ever want to make $1,000 that I'll ever get out of bed? Because <laughs> the residual is if you never get out of bed, right? So you gotta be careful. You know, the ADHD can cause you to forget sometimes. It, it doesn't go well. Nevertheless, so you're going to make the solution parallel to the need, okay? So let's move on here. Prospecting, again, it's different levels. It's the one-on-one, -on -one, it's the first look, it's the webinar, do you know when your webinars are? All right, there's a great one on Sunday night right now, about nine o'clock. Um, you're gonna invite them to a meeting maybe after they hear the seminar. They may not wanna get in right away. You may have to take them to a third level. Hey, we have this big Super Saturday event. Why don't you come out? It's different stages and you understand that going in. You you're stay motivated, right? Because you know it's not a first call close all the time. However, you always try to close someone all the time. After they see the, er, the presentation and you answer their questions, I highly recommend you ask this question. So John, when do you want to start making money with us? When I started asking that, I couldn't believe how many people said, right now. Or they say something like this, and I've learned the response. They say, I said, when do you want to start making money with us? They said, I love this. How do you want your first check made out? They go right into it. I'm shocked. And then you sweat a little, you go down that credit card. Visa MasterCard. What's that? Visa or MasterCard? Oh, Visa. I'm like, holy cow. You know? It's amazing when you ask the question, when do you want to start making money with us? And you got to add with us, because when you get those real successful people, I've gotten, I'm already making money. Oh, sorry. You know? I meant with us. See, everything's thought out. We already made the mistakes, guys. We figured out what to do. All you got to do is copy it. Home meetings, I will highlight here, it was the backbone of building our business. We, we actually got to the point of two home meetings a night, okay, some nights. Amazing, all fresh new people because of the people known by the people that just got in. When someone joins, the first thing you do is you call them when the alert on your phone goes off. John, Mike Fody, presidential director, welcome to the team, my friend. Hey, quick question, how fast can you put me in front of the five sharpest people you know? Can we do a home meeting next week? 80% want to do a home meeting. They're excited. Moving on. Fortune's in the follow-up. Okay? I'm going to tell you to do something right now I wish someone would have told me to do. Keep a separate notebook of every single person you talk to that says no or maybe. I started going back years ago in some old notebooks. I had five or six of them trying to find these people. And I'd see the name. i said, I know they're ready now. I heard they're out of they got laid off or they got downsized, okay? When I first got in the business and was so excited and knew nothing, I called the one guy I, I would, was working for. I used to be a presenter for that business you probably heard on the radio, Real Estate Riches, years ago, right? And I was pretty good. I mean, they had 30, 40 people a night out. And at the end of the night, I had I had a 30% ratio where 30% came up and joined. And it was 10 grand in joint. That's not 375, okay? So I called this guy, one of the two owners of the company, and I said, 
I found something amazing. You've got to see this. I've got 400 houses. I don't need anything else. Right? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Four years later, I get a phone call. Who do you think it is? I would think. I'm seeing you around the internet. I see you're really doing well in the business. I see you're doing another network marketing company. It wasn't working out. So she eventually joined my business. Okay? It didn't hurt that I had success, that I, my bonus was in her city, and she's doing this, right? It helps. They watch you. They watch you. Your brother-in-law watches you. Everybody watches you to see if you're in it six months from now. So consistency is key. Fortune is in the follow-up. Remember that. Now, that is really all I have to say today. But the best 10 minutes is saved for last. I just mentioned a big guy in real estate, and actually the backstory there was eventually he had a dispute with his partner, and his whole company was being fought over. That why is why he was an open-minded person. But as big as that guy was, the guy you're going to see now is the biggest. He manages a thirty-five million dollar real estate hedge fund. Oh, I'm sorry, he owns and manages a thirty-five million dollar real estate hedge fund. He's helped hundreds of people in this business who had questions on real estate, avoid the mistakes, and experience success. If you haven't talked to him yet, you better. This guy doesn't need the business. That's my point. Yet he loves the business. Yet he's an executive director in the business. If you're on his team, thank your lucky stars and get ready to strap on your seatbelt. You see, successful people who don't need the business love this business because they understand the magnitude of the life-changing residual. Guys, give us 10 more minutes because it's going to be the best. And give it up for top 50 money earner, Mr. Stephen Lloyd.